What you are about to watch is a man who is at the roots of Path of Exile's largest controversy in its long and storied history. A man who has been the target of repeated and prolonged defamation. A man who has remained remarkably consistent in his viewpoints and the articulation of them, despite being ostracized by nearly all of his fellow peers. A man who has single-handedly created more mirror tier items than any other player in the game, period. A man whose knowledge of Path of Exile's deep and intricate, overwhelmingly complex itemization systems is second to none. I present to you a conversation with James Belton. But for anyone that doesn't uh, know, if you don't play Path of Exile, or if you just don't understand the, the current situation of the game, trading as a whole is a uh, very controversial topic to a lot of people. Not to everybody. There are quite a few archaic systems, such as you have to be online to actually sell items. And not only that, because this game is the way it is, so you're doing maps, right? You go into a map and you're just walking around, you're killing monsters. Because you're doing all of that, when you get a whisper for someone wanting to buy an item, you have to stop what you're doing, portal out, go in, Hit the tab, invite the person to your hideout, wait for them to join the hideout. If they have a hard drive, you're then there. And then you have to go to your tab, you have to get the item out, you have to make sure it's the right item, make sure the price is correct, then you trade the item, wait for them to put in the currency, bada bing, bada boom. There's a more complexity to the system than that. To give you context as to why uh, I want to talk to Mr. Belton here is Belton is a high-end crafter, high-end mirror tier crafter. He's probably like one of the best crafters in the game, if not the best. And if it's kind of silly to say something like that, especially if you don't understand Path of Exile, but there absolutely is a skill curve to crafting. Having the knowledge to manipulate the systems efficiently is a absolutely gargantuan uh, learning curve in this game. Long story short, because of the asynchronous trading, there is a specific third-party system for, let's just call it crafting. It, it's for other stuff as well, but crafting called the Forbidden Trove, TFT. And what they do, when you have need to bulk buy anything, but specifically like crafting, crafting resources or resources to modify your maps, make them harder, get more uh, content or more, uh, more loot and stuff out of them. You go to these people or you go to something very similar. Because of how important crafting is in this game, the high-end crafting people in this game have a, have a reputation that the, uh, to go with them. There has been a, like a war. It's been a straight up war between Mr. Belton and the Forbidden Trove, TFT. And because of just the nature of who Belton is, I've been watching his content for a long time. A man, I, I honestly want to say a man of conviction, right? Everyone's been essentially slandering him or putting him in a bad like misrepresenting him and it just it's it's weird and he has wanted to speak about this publicly he's been trying to get on like podcasts with other people and they just keep canceling on him it's weird to me because he's not in my opinion you're not you're not controversial belton and I, this is where we can actually get into our conversation here once you're back he's not that controversial so i'm not very familiar with like the actual nitty-gritty of the drama i'll let belton speak to that i just want to give him the platform to speak on it that's my goal all right what's going on food fella? Nothing much. How are you? Not bad. If I'm being honest, I I, when, when, I didn't think you're going to be ready right away. And I noticed that I had uh, about a six day neck beard growth. And as someone who has <laughs> been proverbially referred to as the uh, final boss of the neck beards, I figured I might as well not uh, dig myself into that hole. So Understandable. put on a clean t-shirt. Shave the neck beard off. Are you streaming right? Do you want me to pull up your stream for the, or do you want to do webcam or not? Uh, why don't we just, well, do you want to just do a video call between the two of us? Is that possible or no? Yeah, that's absolutely then, possible. Yeah. 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 How, how many mirrors have you been making? 30 mirrors now? Almost? Uh, in the past. No, that's in the past, that's in the past uh, two and a half days. Uh, so I did a 30 mirrors in three day challenge. Um, I made 25 <laughs> mirrors after 42 hours, including a 12 hour sleep. For reference, you guys, most people do like a 10 divine challenge or something. Like they make a character around 10. But this guy's like, yeah, I'm going to make uh, 30 mirrors in three days. No problem. Just give you some context there and a mirror is uh a lot more money it's like what a thousand divines right now i don't even know how much it is uh, yeah 1080 divines so it'd be, it'd be like 35 maybe about thirty five thousand divines so it would translate to uh, about 500 divines an hour every hour yeah uh, over three so, days including sleep th this is the caliber we're talking about here boys when i when i say that the mirror tier the end game of end game crafting this is what he's doing um and i'm sure you did some other stuff too. i'm not i'm sure you didn't like just straight up craft stuff oh, it's okay I, I fully attribute all of my personal characteristics and my capacity to craft so <laughs> I, I will I will be pigeonholed into that. You ever see me link it, linking stuff in Global One? It is because I want to be validated. Let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. And that's honestly why I want to talk to you too, because I've been I've watched your stuff for a while and you've always been super consistent. You've, you've not tried to ever hide who you are. You've been very genuine. Um, so it's, it's honestly very commendable to see you still just being super consistent and you've never really backed down from it. So that's yeah, a, I appreciate that. I, I mean, it's, I mean, you've played POE, I think you said since 2013, right? Yeah, a long time. And I'm, I'm, I imagine you've been doing content in that space for a while too. I'm sure you'll recall like when, when Twitch was just in TV or when I first started streaming POE prior to the military, it was a different space back then, right? Like, uh, it wasn't as uh, I don't I, I don't know if you want to call it PC culture, world culture, or whatever. But like oh, yeah. people were far more oh, yeah. you know upfront about it. And so when I came back, it was a bit of a, a culture shock. You know, I think my my philosophy on it has always been that it, I'd rather be disliked for who I am than liked for who I'm not. Yep. And I think like the biggest turnoff if you're trying to enter that space for me as like a viewer previously is if you can recognize that someone is pandering to you, right? Like I just find that so yep. you know uh, patronizing, right? And it's like 
I don't have the, that personality type to be like patient enough and, and whatever. So it's like either be yourself or lean into something that is eventually going to lead you down a rabbit hole you can't get out of. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's try and is your webcam on? Do you have it on in Discord? There's no green screen, obviously, in Discord, so it's going to look a, a little less professional. But what? Let's let's call you know. Let, I'm just going to find a flattering camera angle. <laughs> All right. yeah, it's so weird. I, you have my camera flipped in OBS, so it's weird seeing me at the the other angle here. Where the f is the skinny filter? <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm with you, man. I got some extra. I got some dad chub coming in. Okay. So, Mr. Belton, nice to meet you. Nice to talk to you, my good sir. Um, the, main, the main goal of this, um, I wanted to let you have a platform to just speak to whatever you want to talk about, specifically, uh, you know, with the, the drama, so to so to speak, with what's go yeah. been going on. But I also want to delve into the, the larger topics, right? Like, why the drama exists in the first place. Not not the trading, essentially. Like, why, why, why these things happen at all um, but we'll get to that once you discuss what yeah. you, whatever you want to discuss so i just want to give you the platform right now because again if you, if you haven't been following it it's tough to articulate exactly what's been going on i'm sure you can do it much more concisely than i could um and <laughs> oh, there's been a lot of videos be, before we start concise has never been my strong suit yeah. <laughs> um in particular since i started streaming I, I i like internet culture is kind of a new thing for me like i like when i in high school like i went to a boarding school to play football and i didn't start gaming till i was like 25 and so, like, talking at a computer screen without a human being coming back has morphed me into, like, this this pseudo-human where I just ramble on on random topics because I'm, <laughs> I'm used to talking to guys' names, like, called, like, Rocket 69 being like, hey, Belton, <laughs> how do I craft this? And I'm like, you, you know, you can't interpret. <laughs> yeah. I, like, two days, two days ago, I found out emojis were meant to uh, indicate emotions, like, connected to sentences. It wasn't just, like, you know in PoE, people who have those, like, weird, like, Asian anime hideouts that are like yeah. sexually suggestive. I just thought it was like that kind of weird, like I don't want to look at your search history kind of cu culture thing that just sort of escaped me. So, um, <laughs> yeah, the uh, if I if I do ever ramble on, feel free to cut me off. So my chat's telling me click on his camera so you both your cameras are zoomed. Okay, uh, click on his camera. Oh yeah. Oh, there you we probably go. have one larger. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Hey, how <laughs> you right. doing? How you doing? Hey, what's up, cutie? Um. Yes. Oh, and uh, sorry, before I start, congratulations on the, the little one, by the way. Ah, thank you, man. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. That's great. A lot of joy coming in. Oh, shut up. It's never fun when you write have a kid, okay? I've got enough character uh, for the kids. Uh, I don't know. I think, I'm, I think I'm having a lot of fun, actually. She's, she's a good baby. Maybe I got lucky, but she's, she's oh, been no. a good baby. As someone with no kids, you can trust my opinion on this topic. <laughs> I, I, I am an active Redditor. All right? I will say, just to get the cringe out, I will say, though, whenever you hear someone talk about, like, oh, it'll have a kid, it'll change your life. It'll change your perspective. Honestly... It kind of does. Like seeing the birth happen. I'm, I'm just saying. Like you, you got you fellas out there that are like in your mid twenties, thirties. You have that to look forward to. It'll be worth it. I promise. All right. Anyway, I get the cringe out of the way. Okay. Well, that's cool. That's cool and all. But until you show me receipts of her dibs per hour, I don't believe it. <laughs> hey, soon. We'll see soon, dude. I, I kid you not. She because she she's all, she's looking all around. Right. She's a newborn. She doesn't she doesn't know what she's looking at. But when I put her in my arm and I'm playing the game, playing Path of Exile, she's looking. She's yeah, looking. I swear. I swear. She's looking right at it. She's, I can see her eyeballs tracking what's going on. So I'm just saying. She's that's going to be the next paradigm shift, man. Like, you know how they used to have like those uh, wild, like uh, Chinese bot farmer, gold farmers? It's like, just we don't need the farms of the olden days. We're going to have large families. We're going to set up computers all around the house. We're yeah. going to fuck it. We're going to make seven magic find characters. Oh, they're going to start spamming some cat W stuff and they're just going to get to work. <laughs> that's how, it, there like that's that. how they get down. Dude, <laughs> to do a quick tangent, before we haven't even started talking about the actual stuff, so it's not really a tangent yet, but RuneScape, yeah. RuneScape has a legitimate problem with that. The bot farming in there, it's it, everyone makes a joke. It's the Venezuelans, but it is the Venezuelans because their economy well, is... What was I, the, the, the craziest thing I ever saw about this, and sorry, we can get back on topic after this, was uh, it was a 60 minutes uh, piece, um, and it was about how in uh, forced labor that they have in prisons in China, this was about a decade ago, uh, they used to make you know things like uh, license plates and whatever for the labor in there, and they realized that for the, the Chinese state, it was actually more profitable to force the inmates to farm gold in World of Warcraft. What? This is back like <laughs> this is like when Burning Crusade came out, and so it, it's a sixty minutes article or uh, clip, and all you see is a bunch of people in prison uh, jumpsuits with a line of like two hundred computers <laughs> on level fourteen hunters farming wool cloth in like the Arathi or like whatever it was, <laughs> like that zone by the dead mines. <laughs> that, that's crazy, dude. There are going to be so many research papers and stuff written on the explosion of gaming and uh, 
uh, being able to spend real currency on virtual items, like that's that's gonna be so wild to see the yeah, stuff that comes out the whole, in 20 years. The whole years. time you're watching it, you're just, you're, you're just imagining yourself being the inmate, being like, joke's on you, I used to have to pay rent to do this myself all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Okay, so let's get into why why we are got in yeah, touch with yeah, one another sure. in the first place. Um, so again, I really just wanted to give you the platform. So I'm, do you have, do you want me to ask you a specific question or do you just want to start getting yeah, into well, it? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if referencing the, uh, the stuff with, um, I mean, it's, it, it, it's hard to not paint yourself. Like I, I don't want to come across as a victim. I've always been successful within the game, but in, in describing where the issues would be sort of surrounded that and trade and, and some of the behind the scenes gatekeeping stuff, we can kind of touch on that a little bit quickly. Yeah. Um, if there's any specifics in that, let uh, me, in that vein, let me start with this. So I already gave the chat, the context before you got online with the, mm -hmm. the basics of what TFT is and why it matters to the game. Uh, with how bulk trading is a thing in the game, you can't really do it outside of third-party tools, and this this place, TFT, Forbidden Trove, is the place to do yep. it. So I want to ask you specifically, just straight up, are they RMT? Yes. There you go. Okay, simple as that. So uh, no skirting around it whatsoever. RMT, real money trading, is you take the virtual, like we just described, you take virtual stuff in the game, and then you trade it away for real-life yep. money, for real-life profit. So that... In and of itself, that's, uh, I guess, morally gray, right? Because it's a virtual... Uh, we, we can get into blah, blah, blah stuff. Like, it doesn't matter. But yeah. the point, the simple point is, is that it's against the terms of service of the game. And it mm -hmm. seems like there has been no repercussions or very little repercussions, uh, despite it yeah. being pretty much blatantly obvious to anyone that has been following this. So, yeah. what, is, the what predominant are issue, The predominant issue as, as it pertains to PoE, obviously, removing any ethical or moral, moral equivocations, because I think those are a little bit silly. Yeah. No humanist is ever going to sit there and be like, okay, I can either feed my family or make more currency in the game in an ethical way and be like, fuck you for feeding your family. But within GGG's stance, it's, you know, they do ban certain people for certain activities, and they have banned people before. Um, and with it being so evident that this is going on, the inaction is somewhat problematic. But for the for the players themselves, the issue uh, as it's evolved is that TFT acts pretty much like the de facto marketplace for the game itself, right? But not only that, they're essentially a market maker. And as well, they've also given themselves basically the regulatory authority that you might have with like the SEC in the real world, where they also can blacklist people um, so like they have a, a connection, they have a, a third party application that connects to the trading website and it'll say your name will get read out if you're a member of TFT, if they choose to put you on this list and it'll say this person is banned for being a scammer or for whatever. And so half a million people use TFT. And so a substantial portion of people who see someone whose name says, oh, this guy's a scammer, will just avoid trading with them. Or if you're in this, the line of business, so to speak, that I am with mirror crafting, do you think people are ever going to trust you with their mirror to mirror an item if it says you're going to steal it, right? And um, the deeper you get into it, it, it's essentially TFT was built up to work like a vertically integrated supply chain where the lower levels of it, you know, it, it's like that old saying, uh, if the, the product you're using is free, you are the product, right? And uh, they have, all, the, you draw in the community members in all of these ways that people trade and they control the supply of material markets, right? They have forced timeouts on certain people, you know, like if, if you want to buy or want to sell something, it'll give you a 15 minute timer, right? Where it's like, till you can post again, but certain people on their side of things, they don't have these timers on, so they can go and they can right. spam them or they can, they can remove a post if, if it's really cheap or they can delete it and go pick, take it off the person. Um, so there's, there's tons of, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, absolute power corrupts ab absolutely. Like that's, I, I guess, the, the biggest issue with it. The problem is in um, the messaging for something like that is very difficult. Um, or at least I've had a difficult job translating that to an average player and right. getting them emotionally invested into a way that how, how does this impact me? Right. One of the things that is, I'd say, almost universally true with PoE, and this this happens with crafting, with anything else, the more steps removed something is from its end state, the less people tend to be invested into it. So if you look at certain things like um, you can buy divination cards for like right now, if you go look on the market, there's a, call, a card called I See Brothers. There's two cards for it. That it gives you two uh, fracturing orbs. Fracturing orbs are 39 divines. And the divination card is 37. So you can literally buy two of these divination cards in 30 seconds, turn them in and turn around and sell them for a four divine profit. That inefficiency in the market there, the fact that you have to make one trade is being valued at four divines, right? So there's people sitting there saying, well, I don't know how to get started. And it's like, no, it's the, the reality is these things are omnipresent. You just haven't taken the time to look into them, right? And so tell, trying to explain to somebody how they're like a cog in a machine that's 30 steps removed and how mirror right. services impact it, it. That's just difficult. Plus, um, you know, 
uh, I'm, I might be a little bit brazen and brash sometimes. Plus, I like to start to online fights with Europeans all the time. So I think sometimes my personality a, va gets, a valiant uh, and noble effort right there. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. <laughs> Imagine not being American in 2024. Wake up, people. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Um, yeah, and that that's one of the things when I when I initially reached out to you is like I I've been playing the game for a very long time, but I've never really delved into like anything mirror terror whatsoever. Um, just because that's how I play the game, right? I, I play a build, and I once I get to like the mid '90s, like high '90s at most, I'm like, all right, I want to do something else. I, like I, I don't feel the need to ever do that, and I'm sure a lot of players relate to that as well. But the point is. Ma mainly again for uh, your name, your what you're doing. I think you've been doing a, a brilliant job, by the way. You you've just been putting your head down and making your content. Like you're essentially just ignoring. Yeah. Uh, well, well you, you know, you actually, you might enjoy this because, uh, and to, to your credit, much to your credit, and, and I I owe you a debt of gratitude for this. To be sincere for a second, a rare moment of sincerity. What you're referencing to, I don't know if you brought this up in your preamble, but I've been asked on the podcast before and stuff like that, and then literally at the time of they cancel because the other people get cold feet because having their name beside mine could have given them because TFT has a, uh, they have a partnered streamer section, right? Or pon partnered content creator. Yeah. There's half a million people in the discord and it's one of the most uh, preeminent things when you go to it. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, um, they, I'm being told if I do something beside Belton, my name is going to get removed from that list. And so that, that affects Bro. people, people's wallets. Right. Oh my and I'm gosh. not, I'm not, I'm not, um, Naive so, enough to, to think that my that my sense of self importance or right. righteous indignation will surpass someone's <laughs> need to support themselves. What what he's saying um, is like and when you embed your your Twitch stream into like a website like a wiki like a wiki or something like you see like oh, watch this guy live right now stuff like that. It's just it's just popcorn clicks like they don't matter at the end of the day. They're just gonna go away at me. So what you're articulating is that people have been scared to associate with you essentially because of the repercussions of losing out on viewers that will literally never stick around in the first place. That's just. Yeah, uh, and that, that's like yeah. the, the least egregious, right? And the, and the most egregious yeah. is like, I don't like someone's like, I don't want you to be associated with Belton, period. And it's like, all right, sounds good. like this. Either way, it's just that this leaves such a sour taste in my mouth, man. Um, so yeah, yeah well, I, I really mean, the, 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 the layers of that too, like I, um, I, I made a video uh, talking about how TFT was RMTing, right? And somebody else posted it to Path of Exiles Reddit, uh, where I was the top 50, I was top 50 most upvoted posters of all time on POE subreddit. I had over like 50 guides written on there, tons of crafting things, whatever. Yep. And um, I was permanently banned from the subreddit by moderators and came to find out one of the Reddit mods was also a TFT moderator. And then- Surprise! Um, Whoa, who would've yeah, thought? But, but my, my old Twitch handle used to be James Belton, which is my government name. And in the subsequent months, uh, TFT came to my stream one day when I was AFK and started spamming porn and then reported me and my, I got permaban from Twitch from it. And so, Dude, um, I didn't even, but, 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 but then they started going to Reddit and saying Belton got banned for being a racist and the moderators refused to take down any of the comments that were disparaging of me. And so, um, I put up a, a search where you could search your t a term within a sub. So I would search Belton every day. And because it's my government name, uh, I went on a date with a girl one time and she goes, you know, I looked you up before this. And uh, the first thing that came up was that, um, you're like a serial, uh, violent, uh, <laughs> schizophrenic, like fucking no whatever. Way. And, and, I, and that's why I had to change my Twitch name. And so the, the, the moderators would never remove that. And so it started to have like real world implications Dude, from that I, side of things. I don't mean too. to laugh to be, I, I'm laughing at the absurdity of that. Like the extent yeah. at which they went, that's insane. That literally that's insanity. Like you have to be straight yeah. up uh, sociopathic. Like that is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so like when people, because like I remember when people thought I was crazy to pick this fight, so to speak, because I had at the time I'd been banned from Twitch. Uh, the the pr predominant uh, opinion there being that uh, it was because I was making racist remarks or whatever. Blah blah blah. I had 39 viewers on my YouTube channel. I had 400 people in my Discord, and I had, I think, 600 subscribers on YouTube. That's what I'm saying. And uh, yeah. you, you've got my webcam right now. I drew this on a whiteboard behind me, and I stare at this every day when I play uh, PoE. Um, and it's like, it's been my motivator for like the last whatever certain amount of time. It's and, personal. Uh, He's saying it's personal, well, baby. Yeah, but it, in the past year, that YouTube channel has gone to, I mean, it's still humble, but it's like 22,000 now. The stream's grown, whatever. And I ended up getting an email from uh, GG, or from Twitch saying that, uh, oh, um, yeah, this was a mistake on our part. Please accept our apologies. They made me partner or whatever, whatever. But three, it was three months after I filed the, because when you're you know not a high view count, you're not a high priority. Exactly. So even though it was absolutely something that wasn't my fault, it took three months to get that corrected. And in that time, the damage is done. Somebody reads an article yep. three months ago 
and and whatever. So uh, to tie back into my sincere moment before I start memeing again, the uh, I appreciated you giving that opportunity because it was uh, I, as of late. I'm sure you probably are familiar with like uh, they ended up Path of Building. They ended up banning the guy from Path of Building, and that sort of cascaded into a firestorm where <laughs> everyone in the community got invested. And um, I was like, look, like. I don't want to pile on on this in the sense like, oh, I want to do this for views. But I was like, this is my opportunity of leverage because people are now invested into a topic emotionally. That's like, it's like in politics, you know what I mean? Yeah. When people make these like in, in, incendiary comments about someone and like they might trick them into like believing one of their platform policies in between there, right? I was like, all right, like I'll dogpile on this, but I'll also use the opportunity to expose the, the real issues. And uh, you might actually, because, you know, you, you even prior to, People kind of turning the tides there. You had reached out to me as, as you did and uh, and extended that olive branch, so to speak, which, I, again, I'm eternally grateful for. But Dude. I did get a DM. Yeah. I, I did get a DM the other day from TFT's head crafter. Oh. And it was two words. Huh? You won. Hey. That's awesome. <laughs> that's good news. Yeah. 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 So that was that was pretty cool because it was it was just, you know what? We're not, we're not, we're not friends, but. <laughs> the, fucking... the, yeah the mutual uh respect there that's yeah that's it on it's, it is um very commendable again to see someone really just stand up for what they believe in it and just even oh. even if, even if it's yourself right and not, not to again get into the moralistic blah 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 um it, there, there has been it's, it's a great example for other people to see if you are being mis even just mis misrepresentation even the small things like it matters because eventually if someone keeps repeating something it's, it's going to become the reality at some point yeah. so you have to nip that stuff in the bud so to speak um and it's it's been a lot more than that like it's, it's not been a small thing you just like prune a branch like you, what, what you have been dealing with for a while now is it blossomed exploded into all of this stuff, but it's awesome to hear yeah. that uh, it's it's reached. I don't know. I don't want to say conclusion, um, but it's reached a a at least a, a neutral point. I guess is something you could put yeah, it for right I, now. Yeah, I mean, like it, it's it hit that critical mass, I think, and people. It's like uh, there's often times where people get like emotionally charged by something and kind of rally around it, but they need that like somewhere to actually put that energy to and into a productive way. And I mean, I don't know if you saw the conversation that they had with Zizarin had with. Um, the PoE devs or whatever, but you know, you hear about Ashling getting itemized with an exalted orb, and they're moving away from this. Um, they changed the bestiary because of a conversation I had with them a couple leagues ago. Um, you know, all of these things happening. GGG obviously is not. I don't think they're gonna get into like these ad hominem attacks and, and fucking get into muddy water, muddy the waters sure, sure. there. But when they're taking concrete actions to um, to reduce the, or actually at, before the end of last league, I made a video on how. Uh, TFT had used um, a band. A guy got made the uh, mirror bow. Then that account was banned for cheating. But they moved the mirror bow, like basically laundered it onto the Janubu, who was the head of TFT's account. Then they used all the money they had made from that to buy ninety eight percent of all Hinakora's locks yes. because they announced that they were going. They, they announced that they were going legacy, yeah. right? And then I made a video about this and how they got it. And guess what happens? Oh, Hinakora's locks are so, reintroduced to the game. So, like, I thought that was hilarious, by the way. Like I, I didn't yeah. follow that, in, but I knew it happened for a reason. I was like. That yeah, was, that's funny. But, but but that that like I'm not saying that like I, I I'm the like I might have sparked a fire there, but sure. the amount of people that would have reached out to GGG and the amount of flock they would have got that certainly would impact it, right? And so over time, I mean, like it, it's not going to happen overnight. I played I played as you as you have the game for a decade. And, you know, GGG is receptive to player feedback, yes. but they don't you know they don't necessarily just jump in to the waters like they used to actually yeah. uh, for viewers who don't know this they used to actually use the poe subreddit as their primary form of communication with yeah. the community it's only been um, recently it's only been the past couple years i'd say that they ha they've stopped doing that yeah yeah and so like this past week so ggg announced that um uh, in terms of concrete things that have changed obviously this interview which is um meaningful for me on a personal level so thank you again for that and that uh, uh the the tft moderator who is also a subreddit of the moderate or sorry the subreddit moderator he was forced to step down and the subreddit has now a universal uh, set of rules that applies to all moderators that they can't be a member of third party groups that it might have uh, ulterior motives or whatever okay. uh, that they they can't comment or they can't moderate any threads that are about themselves and they have a set rule for content creators um, as well the head of gg or the head of tft janubu uh, stepped down and relinquished his role um, and a lot of people thought that this was and it still probably is frankly just like you know, when like Elon Musk puts in a new CEO, but right. still maintains the voting or whatever. But at the same time, um, one of the more egregious things that TFT did and really what kind of uh, uh, furthered my conviction was that um, 
initially when they had banned me from TFT because of mirror crafting and stuff and our personal issues, I didn't have a big problem with it. I had been banned off Twitch, as I mentioned. My YouTube channel, though, I went from 500 subs to 10,000 subs in a month and a half. And because of that, a lot of new players started messaging me in game, being like, I joined your guild, right? Newer players, they wanted whatever it was. So I said, of course, my guild goes from 20 to 200 people. TFT st sent someone into my guild to find out who was actively playing and then started banning all of those people from TFT just for being in my guild. But it wasn't people that were it wasn't people that were mirror crafting. It yeah. was new players that were coming from YouTube that just wanted a community to to play with. And then because that, because my name was black, like you can, literally if you put if you put the word Belton in a, a title of a, a thing on the subreddit thread, it'll be auto moderated away. And so all of these people started posting on um, the thread, being like, "Why can't I trade in the community anymore?" Blah blah. And they were all auto moderated away. And then people started saying, um, "Bell Belton's a scam or Belton's a racist." And it actually caused a bunch of people to quit the game that had just started because TFT had done all these things. And so I was like, look, you're gonna come after me, that's fine. Cause like, I, I you know, like I, 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 I can handle that myself, but it's like the fact that newer people who are the ones that like keep this game going are now getting targeted right. by this. Um, that, that sort of furthered my conviction. And then um, they went even a step further because as the YouTube channel grew and as I got unbanned on Twitch, uh, my discord grew to 6,000 members and they banned 4,700 people from TFT. Are First, simply joining my Discord. It's just petty. Um, it's, it's literally just well, pettiness. Like that. But is... the thing is, my, my Discord actually has like a functional utility. It's it's meant to be. It's like you know how TFT is like a trading post. My Discord is um. It's like okay, it has sections for uh, you know, if you want to take calculated risk strategies, mapping strategies for currency, crafting strategies for currency, crafting guides, blah blah. blah. So it's like people actually use it for like okay, TFT is the place to actually like trade. Um, like to actually exchange goods, but uh -huh. like Belton server is a place to learn those strategies where you can discuss them back and forth. And so it's not like the people that were in there were doing it because they were like, Team Belton, fucking get him, right. Edward. Like, Bell is mine. It, it was because the people wanted to literally get better at the game. And so th literally thousands of people were banned from trading simply for trying to just do something to, to improve their game experience. And um, one of the things, sorry, to connect to the earlier point, aside from Janubu stepping down, uh, the head community manager of uh, of uh, TFT jumped into my Discord after that announcement, and uh, he just said, "Look, guys, I'm not going to defend what we did, but just so you know, we we were sincere in this. If you were banned, let me know, uh, and we'll revert that." And um, I just said to him, "Look, I'm never going to rejoin TFT. Um, I want to be like straight up about this because I think it's a more manly thing to do. Um, I'm not ever going to take down my videos saying that you guys are RMTing. Um, I stand by those convictions." But, uh, and uh, I will never, you know, try to rile anyone up to get me re-allowed in TFT. It's not something I'm interested in. However, if you unban everyone from my Discord as a sign of good faith, I will publicly acknowledge so. Um, and the, to their credit, at least for the guys that are doing it right now, whether or not it's a PR move, uh, I guess we'll find out in the long run. They actually did do so. And uh, so now, uh, you know, thousands of more people have access to trade in the game. And, um, uh on top of that, TFT now has a rule that they uh, will allow more free speech, as they put it. Um, so you can, criti <laughs> uh, you can criticize TFT. Another thing, too, by the way, which is just crazy absurd. And I, so, like, Machiavellian and George Orwellian, like, it's, it, it's crazy. But they used to go through different streamers' Discord servers and do, like, a Control-F search for the word TFT. And if there was anything ever critical written, they would ban that person from TFT. The streamer. Uh, they also in the streamer's chat. No, no, no. And the person who said it. But, like, if you were in a Discord server, like, I say I go to Zizren's Discord server, and I'm like, yeah. man, TFT sucks. I comment that. I will be banned from TFT because they send people to everyone's Discord servers to look for anyone that was critical of TFT. Um, they did the same thing on Reddit as well. And so they, I, I told them as like part of the deal for for me kind of like taking my foot off the gas that they have to they have to allow criticism, um, especially criticism that's duly earned. And um, they said as long as you don't you know threaten or fucking you make racist remarks or whatever, that they'll do that as well. So in terms of positive change that uh, uh, has come about, Right. From, I don't want to say like the last year of struggle, but within the context of streaming, uh, the last year of struggle, right? Yes. I'm, not, I'm not trying to equivocate that to like, no, I, I understand, I understand. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, um, that that those are positive changes, right? And uh, absolutely, some people are a little bit more vindictive and they're like, Belcher, how could you, fucking, what are you, a, a TFT apologist now? And I was like, how dare you? <laughs> no, of course not, but I was like, it's you're equally at fault if you can't acknowledge positive changes that someone's yeah, made exactly um it, it, as if you could just sit there like 
especially for myself too. I think I, I had some drug problems when I was in my early twenties, and I know like coming back from that, POE was something that I uh, I used as like a tool to keep me away from that like lifestyle. And like I've had times before midstream where someone's called me and my chat just chat being chats like get your chat is it chicks pick up answer on speaker. And so like I did, and I did I did an overnight stream, and on, on the same stream, I got a phone call the next morning. Those two girls who had called me eight hours earlier were dead from, from an overdose. And so oh, like man. in a very and I would have been there if I had not been streaming, right? And so in a very real way, POE is something that like I have a, a high degree of like love and, and concern and care for. But um, you know, the uh the the small steps thing, right? It's like it, coming from that background, it's like I know that there's there's people that you they lose trust in you and you have to like regain that and like any kind of uh yeah infractions you might make against them as a person it's not like you just say okay i'm good now i'm sober love me again they're just like you gotta fucking show it right yep but at the same time i know for myself at, at every stage that i've ever done wrong by somebody when i make concrete steps to try and improve that relationship having that acknowledged has always been something that fosters further growth yep so to like sit there and see tft even whether or not in the long run it's something you're going to stick with to see them at least make concrete steps in a positive direction, I think it would be hypocritical at the best for me to not to not at least acknowledge that. So that's good. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a sign of a maturity, which I think mm. a lot of people in the online ecosystem are uh, lacking in, to put it bluntly. Okay, so that is more or less the synopsis <laughs> Dude, yeah. that was you did a good job being a uh, on point and being concise the whole time got to give you credit for that because i have watched your videos and i think it's hilarious because i've been i watched your stuff for a long time um and he, at the start of your videos you're like hour and 12 minute long video you're like all right guys i'm gonna make this one as clear and concise as i possibly can here we go let's get into it well, and it's, then, it's the with my girlfriends all right sweetheart it's gonna be one hour no problem like 12 <laughs> seconds later what the f james <laughs> <laughs> that's funny okay um, so let's dive into, unless there's, there's more to speak about it, but I, th I think you did a very good job. If anyone is concerned about this being a one-sided conversation, my goal here was to just let Belton talk about it. I'm again, I'm kind of a neutral party in all of this. I've been playing the game for a while. Yes, but I've not really interacted with this realm of things. Um, so take, take, take that for what you will. If you don't believe me, you don't trust my word. I don't care. Um, it is we're American, so uh, not a Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's in your fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so you, there are plenty of other videos on the topic if you want to delve into the details of all this, but that's not the goal of this conversation. I want to move now forward to uh, the larger topic at a whole, which is what is the functional purpose of TFT? Why does it matter? Maybe not specifically to a, a new player, because I'll give the, the context here. Path of Exile is a wholly unique action RPG, really just RPG in general, because of the amount of attention to detail of the items. The, the entire game, literally from the ground up, has been built around the items and why they are so inter there. Not just because of the number of modifiers. It's the way that you can develop these items and craft them. And they they, they it, your, your build, your character is the items on the character, right? That, that's the whole definition of the character. There is, to, I don't want to get into details, there is just so, so, so much emphasis placed on the items themselves. So crafting the items, making the items, that that's the game to a lot of people. Um, and even if you don't interact with that mechanic yourself, you're still going to buy the items, you're still going to trade other people, you're going to do all this stuff. So why does a system like the, to, or the, the services that a system like uh, Forbidden Trove offers, why does that matter to the game? And is there a way to do it? better uh sorry was this a rhetorical question or are you asking me this specifically <laughs> i ask you specifically like what is the purpose yeah, of tft yeah. why does all this stuff matter in the first place because all this drama only happens because clearly people yeah. are using a service like tft right so yeah. why does it matter yeah, the, like, is I there mean, a better the, way to do it the the, the, the problem is, uh, it's, it's sort of a multifaceted issue some of it is a functionality and some of it is a kind of a stance that ggg has had uh, i think at the, the base of it is that ggg is a very different company now than what it was 10 years ago as an independent studio in new zealand whatever right and so there are certain um i would say corporate approaches or stances that they've taken sort of a hard ground or a hard line on um things like um uh well i'll show them the specifics in a minute but um stuff decisions that they have set precedence for when they were a small indie company with 20,000 people in the entire game that they've now applied to the game when there's millions of accounts 10 years later, right? Some of those create barriers between the player experience and like the company, whatever. And uh, just because of record, you know, it's hard for them to change. I'll give you specifics. Um, GGG has always had a stance that, um, and to a certain extent, I agree with them, 
that there is no potential to be scammed in Path of Exile because they put in the trade mechanic where you have to hover over the item before accepting. Now, for most people, that that almost becomes an auton or like a automatic response where you just sort of hover over and click and you don't actually look, right? And so sometimes you leave yourself open to, um, you know, like if somebody swaps out a, a gem or something like that, like say you're buying a level five Awakened Enlightened and they put in a level four, maybe you don't read it, guy walks away, puts you on ignore, right? And um, that is something that GGG's stance has always been. Uh, and to, again, to a certain extent, I agree. Whether or not the guy is more at fault, there's a personal level of culpability there because you didn't take due action to, to make sure what you were doing was correct. Or um, if you're doing a service, like say mirror service, uh, you're, it's your fault for putting trust into someone that you shouldn't have trusted, right? You gave them the mirror. It's not like they hacked into your account. Right, and so the fact that GGG's stance has always been because there's a two-way street there. Now they're not trying to say that the blame is equal on both parties, but because you have some personal culpability in in the right. reason for your detriment, um, we are never going to get involved. And so that meant that as the game added more and more mechanics, right, uh, things like Ashlings where people might want services or mirror services, or they added. 2,000 different types of little currencies that people want to buy in bulk. And, like, you know, you have to keep in mind, like, PoE trade used to not even exist, let alone the trade <laughs> website. And it's like you had to have acquisition and PoE XYZ, oh, and you had to trade through the forums. Uh, like, I don't know if people realize this. Like, when people ask, you know, how do you become so good at crafting? When I started crafting mirror items, not only did Craft of Exile not exist, the wiki didn't exist, none of these websites existed, POV didn't exist. But you couldn't even, you know when you hold alt and it tells you what the items are yep. and the tiers? Yep. That didn't fucking exist either. It's like you just get to hover over and God <laughs> the forbid you've got like accuracy exalt. and hybrid accuracy. Because you got to sit there being like, wait, what? Right? Like um, one, one of my initial claims to fame was I was the first person to figure out and data mine the uh, item level um, requirements of corrupted mods as well as their weightings. Um, and like... Uh, I was using that to make two and a half mirrors a day, and instead of hoarding that, I, I wrote a big thing sharing it with the community. Um, and so, like, that was actually, like, what propelled me into streaming. But it was, like, the fact that something as simple as being, like, okay, here are what your corrupted mod options are, here are the weights of them, and here are the item level requirements for those implicits. The fact that that, like, it yeah. got me, like, 300 concurrent viewers for, like, a year, it was, like, it just showed how big of a gap there was there, right? Yeah. Um, sorry, one second. It's, uh, Are you good? I, I've missed, uh, j just, you know, cause I gotta get a flex in once every 30 minutes or I, I disappear. Um, uh, one, two, three, I've missed 14 <laughs> mirrors. Sir. I've missed 14 mirror services since I've been talking to you. Oh, okay, no. well, it's for, no. it's for mirror service. For some context, that's, uh, 2,500 divines roughly to Willie's chat. It's for mirror <laughs> service. Uh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, uh, so sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry to, to finish the point there. Because of those gaps and because of those things that have evolved, the reason TFT became popular, uh, it was started around Harvest League and then Harvest, which was originally not itemizing your hideout as it is now, right? Um, you just stash like t 10 Harvest Crafts at once, right? And yep. so if somebody wanted to Harvest Augment, right? People don't want to go to a global or trade one. So the Discord server was what, what grew it from like 500 members to 50,000 members initially was Harvest League. And so people would go there to buy, try and buy the Harvest. And then, you know... Every time they add something, um, you know, whether it's Ashlings, they want to get those itemized, or people want to buy Bulk Beast or things that are not offered in the programs that GGG have. Uh, now you have a place where you can do it. And then that's only the first layer of it. The second layer is that TFT had a bunch of programs and development put into it. And to their credit, they did a great job with this, where you can have a vouching system. So if you have to do a trust based service, so let's say I wanted an Ashling uh, on. On an item I was crafting, I can trade it to them. To I can trade it to the person who's uh, selling it on TFT. Uh, if they trade me my item back and I pay them, then I could go and just type vouch in this channel, and then that person gets an additional vouch. And like every like a hundred vouches, your rank goes up. And so yep. that would be, people who have like eight thousand vouches, it's like they're the most trusted rank. And so like these are people that could do. You know, if you're just doing something with a five divine item, um, you know, you probably don't care if the person has thousands of ouches. But if you're doing it with, like, I've crafted an item that costs 361 mirrors before, most expensive item ever crafted. It's like, I'm not trading that to somebody for fucking, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's like got like four vouchers, right? And so they had that system put in place because GGG had a gap in their development where technically, and again, I sort of agree with them to some extent, you're at fault yourself if you get scammed, basically. TFT had a two-fold approach that was beneficial for people. Well, that was one, it allowed for uh, bulk purchasing of things or uh, expeditious purchasing of things that weren't offered through the official trade site. And the second one being any trust-based service um, could be 
backstopped by a vouching system. It's not foolproof, and if people did take advantage of you, provide screenshot, that person gets banned, so there's at least some repercussion. Uh, and TFT has, like, IP bans and blah, blah, blah. And they, you have to attach it to your PoE account as well, so you can't just make a new character. Um, and so on their end, like, the functional side of it w was quite smart, and at a basal level, it's really uh, evolved from a lack of... The development has come on their part as a lack of... Uh, due to a lack of development on GGG's part. Yep. But for someone who's played for so long, you know that third-party tools have carried this game for a long time. Oh, right? Yeah. Like, loot filters are from NeverSync. Uh, Craft of Exile? Nope, not part of the game. POB? Nope, not part of the game. Like, uh, yeah. just POB, the fact that you still cannot map out your skill tree in the game in any capacity is wild to me because yeah. that that is like the new player that is the thing that new players fixate on it's not it's not actually that bad for you guys that are listening that it might be new it's actually not that bad. it's just yeah. a bunch of life nodes and then damage based on whatever skill you're using it's not bad but anyway it's like the fact well, that you can't even do something not, like that not to contradict you woolly to your your loyal followers here but some people and by some people i mean myself will tell you that i'm the greatest player of all time uh and i have never used path of building once in my life <laughs> is that true you've literally never <laughs> used it no, never once. But it uh, it, it, evolved, it it would definitely be better to use. As I mentioned, I'm not good with tech. It confuses me. Yeah. And uh, you know how we, we were saying you and I both started when you could just look at items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had to know what the mods are. I, I just it's second nature for me to just know what everything is now because right. I, you know I learned it in an analog way. This is definitely a a learning man's game, right? If you if you want to go into if you're just here to play like one hour of Call of Duty with your your boys before you put the kid to sleep and you go to work, you know, you're like you're not gonna enjoy Path of Exile, right? But if you actually like getting into the nitty gritty of systems and why they work, I think that's the thing too, and we can speak more about. Uh, your background, but I think you have a background of like uh, business and finance and yeah, stock yeah, market, yeah. all that stuff. So if you if you enjoy min maxing, I guess IRL, that's a stupid way to put it, but you're gonna love this type of game because there, <laughs> there's so much to do. And that's exactly right, is that because these third party third party tools didn't exist before, the only way to learn it was to do it. You just had to do it and then get experience with it. And then people like you would write up stuff and then all oh, community the, the reason why this game has grown to the spot uh, that it currently has, I would say it's the most popular ARPG, maybe not numbers wise, right? Maybe D4 is <laughs> D4 bad by the way. Um, but maybe D4 has more players or something. I don't know. Um but th there's a reason why it's held in such high esteem with so yeah. many people in the in the gaming world in general, right? Like I got a comment uh, recently is like so, you know people that wear Path of Exile merch they're the only ones that don't cringe at when I see them in real life. I was like, yeah, that's that's a good point. That's a pretty good point. Like, you just know. <laughs> Path of Exile is like a, a stigma attached to it. A, a thinking man's game, if you will. Um, So anyway, so the point with the the, the services that TFT provide, they, they, they serve as a hub for players to come in that require bulk... Um, bulk things. I'll just put it as bluntly as that because that's that's really all it is. Bulk trading. And the reason why that matters is because, they, like you said, GGG has uh, update after update introduced so many of these systems now where you are just buying everything in bulk like there's not a reason to ever buy like one thing individually we're so far past the days of like going like the only thing you use trade is for is like buying a 2c item a 2c amulet to upgrade your resistances like we're so far past that stage and the, the game has just grown so far past where it initially came from there's just so many reasons to trade and trade a lot the path of exile the funny thing is for context for you guys that don't play the game or maybe you're new Path of Exile is the only game where you trade in bulk. You, you, you pay a premium for buying in bulk. It's the only thing I can think of, right? Imagine you go to Costco and they're charging and the you red like... the district. Yeah, it, 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 that's okay. All right, Bell. All right, calm down, Bell. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, like, that's so wild, right? You're paying, you're paying a massive premium, like 20, 30, 40, 50% upcharge just because you're buying in bulk. Like, it's crazy. Uh, so... Now, I guess we can dive into, do you think that's a problem? Do you think that the GGG should, you, you, they've already been making uh, uh, further steps. Sorry, that's my, my Path of Exile ding there. Someone wants to buy my 4.8 Sedima's Touch. Let's go, baby. Um, Do you think that GGG should take further action uh, to, uh, I actually, they, they've already said in that interview with Ziz, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw the clip that they said they're adding asynchronous yeah. trading, which is huge because right now how to trade people, you have to be online at the same time. You have to whisper them. You have to copy the whisper as the person doing the trade. You have to map, get out of your map, which is the huge part for a lot of players. You have to leave the content that you're currently interacting with. Not all, not all of us are hideout warriors, Mr. Belton. Uh, so you have to leave <laughs> the content you're actively doing, go to your hideout, get the item out, wait for the person to load into your hideout. It might take like a minute sometimes. Like, like, there's just so many weird uh, things about it. So do you think that asynchronous trading is a step in the right direction? Um, th there's pros and cons that come with it. Uh, I would say that my stance on pretty much everything in terms of forecasting benefit or detriment to the game, uh, and not to sound like too much of a dick rider to GGG here, is that um, 
I mean, there's a good Mark Twain quote that's, it ain't what you don't know that gets you to, uh, into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so, right? And um, I, I like attempting to um, predict what is going to emerge because, of the, especially when it comes to trade, because trade is so dynamic in, in that it involves player behavior, right? There are certain things that make sense on paper, but then when you see how they actually are yeah. implemented and how people react to them, um, it can be completely different. And so I, I hesitate to speak with any kind of specificity or, or conviction on whether or not that would be good. The problem uh, with the, the asynchronous trading in the game as it exists now, um, and why it's on PoE 1 at least, is that um, <clears throat> the only exhaustible resource in PoE, in particular in temp leagues, is time, right? Um, you have a confined window and it's all about the efficiency of time use. Maps have six portals because they want to train you to find out, okay, which one of these and why loop filters exist. All right. There's an, an abundance of loot, more loot than you could ever leave a, ma a singular map with, right? And uh, if that's the case, um, that means that you have to develop the skill set of knowing what is worth my time to actually take out of the map. Uh, what do I identify in the map? What do I take the time to stop and look at, right? And uh, on top of that, what do I? what's worthwhile to actually price, right? Is it worthwhile for me to take this, put it in my stash, if I have limited stash space? And I mean, to an extent, uh, stash tabs are pay to win in that regard. Uh, I happen to have 3,300 tabs on standard. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that including um, uh, the roof only, obviously? Yeah, because okay, I, okay. I have 130 tabs and I've played for 11 years. So it, 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 it takes like two minutes to load when I open when I click my stash in standard. Yeah, I bet. Uh, two minutes to load is also my, my uh, Bumble bio. Um, but uh, <laughs> stepping back from that, uh, <laughs> the, uh, oh, sorry. What's this? Uh, hold on guys. Another mirror trade. Hold on guys. Got a mirror zone. I've made 445 divines from uh, what we've been talking. All right. Uh, let's, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, sorry. What was I talking? Oh, yes. So the, the reason why uh, the H trade is trading or an auction house would be problematic within uh, the context of, of that, um, you, you know, game implementation is that um, the opportunity cost of time and understanding how to price check items because there's such a vast variance of them. If you can automate that, just put it on a trade site and not have to worry about what is this worth my time, right? Oh, well, I'll pick up everything and I'll list everything if I don't have the limited stash space or if I don't have to, if I can just. You know, I mean, when they had a lot of, like, I, you played before Awaken Trade existed. Can you imagine if when we first started, when you and I first started playing, if that were a tool? I almost, like, I almost, like, it took me, like, six, like three months because I thought it was for sure a bannable thing to have yeah. Awaken Trade. Yeah. I didn't care what chat said. I was, like, my, my philosophy on Twitch chat has always been the IIQ gem was never, uh, you actually have a couple in your stash. It's yeah. good to see. I always say to Twitch, look, the IIQ gem was never nerfed. You guys just got a hold of it, and now they just call it the I gem. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that IQ left, so uh, I never, tr I never trust Twitch chat with anything. But a wicked trade that is like a wild roast, by the way. You're, yeah, you're thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, but the uh, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, joking aside, though, the um, like that, the the, the amount of the force multiplier that awakened trade was to trading in path of exile and itemization in path of exile simply from that one feature cannot be uh, under like overstated. Oh yeah, it it, it was. A radical pair, like that was like the fucking Arab Spring of Poe trade, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, that was just crazy, right? But um, again, a lot of this draws back to the fact that this game was developed in the mid two thousands, right? right. Um, on, on like on the back of Diablo two, and uh, from an independent studio, right? And so, if you are implementing a trade system whereby the only thing that is an exhaustible resource is time. The only skill set that you are can really tangibly develop is your knowledge of itemization, of mods, of player markets, of player behavior, of player preferences. Um, like 90% of what I do, I don't know if you've watched like the video I have on, um, I, I have a video called like Investing in Path of Exile or uh, why it's called like Mirror Making Mentality where it talks about like the psychology of player behavior and how that translates to, to, uh, to different uh, timing and, and, and catalysts for market shifts in PoE. Um, for example, I'll just a, a I'll give you like a quick quick example of this for your chat in case they've never seen anything like that. Um, on the first day or two of a league, right? Uh, people will pay like one or two, three divines for a six link sometimes yep. because people want to get into maps very quickly, right? Now, one of the things that is abundantly available in the first two days of a league are item level, low item level cluster jewels. Now, low item level cluster jewels um, are good for crafting because sometimes 
Uh, they will remove potential modifiers that are undesired, which means the desired ones, uh, especially on eight passive ones that have notables, yep. it's much easier to roll them. Now, the problem with cluster jewels is that people don't really put them on their characters until level 90, 95, because they don't have the passive points for them, right? So that means that you have this material that is in its highest supply on the day one and two of the league, right? Um, and it's at its lowest demand, right? Yep. And you have something like a six link, which is at its highest demand right then, but in three days, it's going to be worthless, right? Six links are worth what now? Like eight chaos, five yeah. chaos? People that's, that's, them. that's not been a thing. That's right? a relatively new thing. That's still so, wild to me. Yeah. So you can, if, if you understand the fact that people in this game tend to be uh, r rather deferent of their uh, long or even midterm success because of short-term desires and the fact that people have like this, uh, this forced sense of... Um, uh, you know, like everything is always rushed, right? Like it's a competition as if, like I've seen people, they're, it's like their ninth day playing the game and they talk as if they're, uh, you know, I'm Exile or Ben. Yeah. Like, dude, I got to, what's your fucking act 10 time? <laughs> I'm like, bro, shit. I'm like, dude, why don't you put on a pair of like boots first? They're like, fuck, okay, <laughs> step one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, you know, so, um, but it, using that example there, right? If you were to use uh, the two divines you might spend on a six link, Let's say the divines are at 100 chaos each. You can buy 200 of those cluster jewels, just the bases for them. You know how much those bases are worth right now? A lot. Three divines each. Yep. That would be 600 divines for what you spent two divines on. And the it, the relationship, like the matrix, uh, and looking at the uh, time and value on an XY axis, that'll happen almost after a two or three day period. And the catalyzing moment for that is when the average player reaches level 90. It's typically around day five to six of a leak. Yep. So if you understand the overall player trends and look at player numbers, active player base, and look at the fact that when you people look at these, you can time these things out and you can time the market with certain shifts like that. Um, and that's how you can get like a parabolic return. And as we mentioned earlier, the only real exhaustible resource is time. And like the reason why I always make fun of magic finders for being manual laborers is that, and I call my, <laughs> I call my, I call my hideout the boardroom is like, um, you know, basically when you look at your output as, con as purely contingent on your input, you're always going to have a, a ceiling on your potential exactly. earnings because yeah. there's always going to be the physical limitation of loading times and how, how fast you can move. Uh, you know, yeah. the fact that you have to go pee or blink or sneeze, right? Yep. Whereas if I can get 50 people who go out there and they spend their physical labor and their time doing that, and let's say they make 10 divines an hour, right? They come and trade me. That takes five seconds. I turn their 10 divines into 15 divines. Okay, I'm only making five divines, but I'm doing that over 50 people. And so in the same time period, right, in that same one hour where you're making five, I'm making 250. Right. And then that, that snowballs and snowballs, right? And so... <clears throat> That's that's really how PoE has developed uh, to the way that it is now in terms of. Uh, sorry, this is a, one of these ranting answers, but no, to paint the whole context of the economy in PoE over a ten-year period is rather difficult in a succinct way. It is the asynchronous trading. I think would be um, similar to POB, where I think that it, it, it's such a powerful tool that it makes people worse players. Uh, and I'll explain what I mean by that. I am much better at math than my younger sister because when I was in learning to do multiplication and math and addition and stuff, we didn't have cell phones with calculators on them. It wasn't an expectation you have a calculator. So yep. when it was in, when we used to get these like these sheets of paper the with tables. like yeah. you had tables and you yeah. had to do the multiplication, right? Yeah. It was all manual, right? And every person I know that started playing PoE when you and I did, because they've gone through the process of having to go and search out information, or if they wanted to know something, They'd have to go look it up for themselves, right? Right. They didn't have fifteen hundred content creators spewing clickbaity things at them, saying like, "Check out my shit," because I'm abjectly mediocre every single league, and I can't support any of this. But fuck it, two hundred thousand <laughs> subs, I'm your guy, right? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. So and and like, um, th there are tools like Path of Building and tools like Awaken to Trade and stuff like this. If if you use them to validate or to confirm, um notions that you come up with yourself, I think they're incredibly powerful. But the problem is that rather than being um, the end, right, people use them as like the means. And because of that, I sure. think that that, interme that intermediary part, the actual knowledge of it gets lost. Like, I, I don't know if you, how many of you said you've watched a lot of my videos. How many times have you seen people comment, <laughs> fake guide, this doesn't work anymore. 
I'm like, yeah. are you goddamn retarded? If somebody says to you, hey, I bought <laughs> yeah. Apple stock, I bought Apple stock in 1980. Yeah, exactly. And now, it's now 100,000 times what I spent yeah. on it. And they come up to you two days, two days later. They're like, listen here, motherfucker. I bought Apple stock two days ago. And, and now I've that? lost 40%. <laughs> I'm like, I said I bought it in 1980. And uh, I want to insult you, but I'm pretty sure it would be a hate crime. Like, <laughs> and, no, that, that, is, that is a very good point. Yeah, but yeah. To, to the flip side of that, it's were those people going to be the next Belton anyway? Are they going to be the next guy who's sitting in and analyzing all the market trends? And No, probably not, right? So no, I, but I guess, should, that person, should that person who is willing to do that? I mean, you're an American. Do you not believe in meritocracy? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, so to, uh, the, uh, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? And the more automated things become, and given the fact that the one exhaustible resource is time, and the fact that PoE has always been a knowledge-based game, uh, and there have been a series of recent and you know consistent implementations that that cut that out, I think to the detriment of people, right? People often say um, one of the funny things, actually, kind of a call back to the TFT thing. A lot of the people from my Discord server that were banned in the thousands, right? Uh, they actually said I make ten times the amount of money uh, since getting banned because I had to use your server, right? Because I didn't have TFTs, and all we discuss are strategies how to become the there fisherman, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly, so, exactly. So, like when you think about what things like TFT are used for, or any kind of automation, whether it's a, a auction house or it's TFT, there are things that bots can do. I'm sorry, but buying a hundred scarabs for nine divs and selling them for ten, like. All right, you're not right. you're not that's is not that you're not like John Locke or Keynes here. All right, like you're not this you're not shifting economic paradigms. All right, like yeah. it's no, it, it's, there's a massive discrepancy between yes, people that are actually understanding how to manipulate because yeah. there are just so many systems. A lot of it is experience, right? Like you mm -hmm. you are still figuring out new ways because there's going to be new things with every league in and of itself. But on top Absolutely. of that, maybe this league introduces something that interacts with oh, the only purpose of this. It, it it by itself is useless, but it interacts with something else that is very specific from a different league. And you're like, holy crap! Like, is that gonna actually work? And then you try it, and it like pfft, explodes, and like, oh, this is crazy! Like. You only are going to understand stuff like that through the experience. So I guess Absolutely. that that would that would be a thing where yes, the asynchronous trading obviously is going to make things more brain dead, quote unquote, um, for the average player. But I think that's only a, a not only, but that is a largely good thing because I think about it in the context of RuneScape. I know RuneScape's item economy is vastly different. It's essentially just like a regular you know real life barter economy. Um, mm. the, the Grand Exchange though is a is a very good system. I'm sure you are familiar with it, if not uh, know the details of it. Um, do you know Do you know Grand Exchange? Do you know what that is? No, I I, uh, I got laid in high school, so I never played RuneScape. Oh, yeah. uh, hey, look at this guy. He's talking about World of Warcraft. He's hating I'm on just, RuneScape. I'm, uh, I, I'm a PoE loyalist, though. I've never I've never actually played a game since I started PoE. Okay, well, uh, th there are ways. All I'm trying to say is that there yeah. are ways that games have done asynchronous trading, and you'll see if you go on the PoE Reddit or wherever your PoE discussion takes place, um, you'll see people mention the Grand Exchange because it is it is a very good system. It's not just a simple auction house. We have listings, and then you know you can sort by value, whatever. It's it's a it's a I don't know how to you you know you would know all these terms for sure. You can't actually see how many items are listed. You can't see the price of them. It just shows you a, a median, and then it shows you, you you can go like plus 5%, minus 5%. You can just do whatever you right. want. And it's based on like the time of the listing. So you, you will not necessarily buy the cheapest item every time. It's like a formula where it's like this guy has listed it for this time, and it's like the closest match to your price. It'll give it to that guy. Yeah. Like it, There's so many intricacies, intricacies but, 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 of it. That, that, that actually could be problematic in PoE. Anytime you put right. like a, bid, a bid auction up, it, right. it takes away the responsibility or the culpability of the seller to actually find out and take much, the time yes how much to list it for and because the big the best teacher in poe and i don't care what anyone says uh because i have lost i have been taking advantage to the tunes of thousands of mirrors like literally i probably get quote unquote scammed out of five mirrors a week because of uh like little mental lapses that i have in playing attention to certain things or whatever and uh i, I can say firsthand undoubtedly the best teacher in this game is always experience right yep. and um if you undersell an item, for example, right? Like you, you find something, a triple synth base, and you sell it for 10 divs to come to find out it was worth a mirror later. Guess who's going to take the time to price check every single triple synth that they ever find for the rest of the time they play PoE, right? Yeah. And that is that is a universal experience with any person you talk to in the game. And so the problem with any kind of bid based thing where the, the final sale price, um, that, that onus is moved to the buyer. It defers any t responsibility for the seller to actually learn about the itemization and the value of different things, not only in terms of the modifiers themselves, but how they correlate. Um, right. And, uh, and yeah, yeah. So the more I think about that, th that system wouldn't even work for the actual items in Path of Exile because there are just so many 
like uh, the base type is the simplest thing about the item, and that's essentially all of RuneScape's items are a base type. There's no stats. I mean, there's stats they give to your character, but like every single dragon two-handed sword is a dragon two. Every single pair of barrels glove, the barrels gloves aren't traded. I'm doing a terrible job explaining, but you know what I'm saying. It's not Path of Exile has as I started this uh, this conversation. Six hundred eighty-eight divines since that we started talking oh, about. Okay, look at this guy. I, <laughs> I've ignored that four point eight divine trade twice now. I'll have you know. I'll have you know. Different leagues here. Um, I actually am doing solo cell phone right now. I'm one of those guys. Um, I was so, just I was just trying to direct you back to poe from that that, that little no, nerd shape thing or whatever I, I understand my point with the poe <laughs> thing is that i think an asynchronous trading system would be excellent just for the bulk trading because people are yeah. already doing that so why not it's, it's like ggg you got you got you got to get with the times now but finally i, I, I like, agree I, I, there, there's merit to that for sure um but asynchronous trading and bulk trading are two different topics right uh bulk trading that's anything that can be bulk traded um, I think there, it, it, like the, you could have asynchronous trading for those because it's essentially the same thing right now. Also, one of the big problems, and I don't hear enough people talk about this, that they have with PoE as it, as it, it's currently implemented with bulk trading, is that um, the scalability of it doesn't work. If, if you're fin like financial markets in the real life, okay, um, you can buy penny stocks and get massive gains on them, right? But you can't translate that because if you buy something for like a thirty cent pink sheet stock and it goes to forty cents, oh, you've got 33% gain, right? Whee! You're not going to have fucking, you're not going to have like a 2 trillion dollar company, right? Like Apple, uh all of a sudden be worth like 700 billion dollars more the next day because it's just the scalability is not there. Now over time, obviously one's more consistent outperforming whatever, right? And PoE sim suffers a similar problem with the way it's implemented now because the more the player base grows, the more the worse the way that it is right now it gets. And I'll explain that. If you're selling a divine for chaos orbs, all right? And you, let's say the, the going rate is 195 chaos and you list yours for 194 chaos, right? That means that let's say there's 200,000 people playing the game. There are probably 10,000 people wanting to buy a divine orb at that minute. And all 10,000 of those people are going to be directed to the absolute cheapest seller. Yep. Right. And so if you list something for the cheapest on trade, it's overwhelming you because you're going to have 10,000. This, this has happened to me so many times. I can't even... Ugh. You'll have ten, you'll get spammed so much to the point like I've, I've actually had my my game crash before because of how many people try to message me to buy something, <laughs> and um, then the problem on the flip side is that if you're trying to buy something, um, there are so many people trying to buy them at the competitive prices that you end up going 10, 15, 20, 30 percent higher sometimes just to have somebody answer you, yep. and that's not fit to scale because the obviously the intention of any company, especially since it's been bought by um, uh, what's it called? Tencent. They're going to be bottom line focused, which means they're going to be looking on new player acquisition, which means the game is going to continue to grow and that problem is going to continue to, to compound upon itself. Yep. And so if, you, if you're willing to admit that there's an issue uh, in terms of uh, functional or development side um, access to these things and the fact that the current implementation is already one whereby there is no player to player friction outside of an unscalable and untenable system because of the issues I just mentioned, then what is really the substantive difference between switching that to um, a asynchronous trading style, like a, a trading post? But that would only extend to things that apply to currency, like that would show up on the bulk trading site. Um, if you start to if you start to blur the line between that and rare items, the economy in this game will be lost forever. Yep, and, and I, I mean agree, that. I, I, I mean that in a very serious way because, especially because, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's one of the things I've, I've mentioned with TFT before, and I, I, I'll. Forgive me if I'm blurry, like screwing up the names of these programs, but people can write Python scripts or something like that, but basically automated bots that can look for certain modifiers. Like let's say you're using alterations and you want to stop at merciless. You can just click a button and it'll roll your alts until it hits merciless and then yep, it'll yep, stop yep, yep, yep. and then you can get it to exalt whatever, right? And so if you can start putting rare items asynchronously, guess what they're going to do? They're going to do the exact same thing to buy, to relist, to price, and that whole thing will be taken over by bots. And on yep. the player experience side, there's no reason to learn it. Right, the 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 friction of of the game That's has true. to exist, but it doesn't necessarily. The problem I think is that the friction right now uh, is coming from the exchange of those uh, the the items. The friction should be coming in the the process of gaining the knowledge to understand those items. Exactly. Right. And it's like you said, uh, like the only resource is time, right? And it, that's the that's the only problem right now is that it's just too much time to do what you want to do for it, unnecessarily. It's just there's no point. There's no point for having it take this much time to bulk trade all this stuff. Honestly. Because because of what you said, it's mainly because you whisper someone and they don't respond. It's just literally that simple. That is the most yeah. annoying part to ninety nine percent of pay players that interact with trade. That is their their huge problem is that I can whisper literally 10, 15, 20 people before I get a message. Mm -hmm. Like, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and it's like uh, the the biggest problem I think, and it's this is a, this is a, a a turn of phrase that I repeat to people that like when I stream all the time is that Poe has because of the ma the massive amount of complexity that Poe bears with it, um, and the fact that the game largely grew off of the back of uh, personalities. Right, Kriparian was mine. I, I heard you mentioning before. Oh yeah. Right, uh, the POE subreddit used to be just dominated by clips from Twitch streamers. Right, yep. you have these people who act somewhat as like arbiters of meta or arbiters of taste in POE, the tastemakers, the big streamers. Right, uh, POE does not have like a an objective scale of zero to hundred where you can say my character is X Y Z. Right, exactly. everything in this game is shitty until people collectively decide that it's not, and all of a sudden it's, it's OP OP again. Right, does that yep. mean that there's an objective truth to it? No, it means that you know people as one person innovates and then people agree with them. Right. And then the, the biggest problem I think that most people have with trade, and if, if I could say one thing to your viewers, it would be this. A lot of the issues, even the ones we're discussing right now, while they are very real issues, they are not, they're not your biggest problem. The, the biggest problem most people have is that uh, in their aversion to risk, right, they, they try to look towards people who they perceive to be more experienced, follow build guides, watch currency guides, do this, do this, do this. But all, all of that is is a rehashing of conventional wisdom. And it is a pure point of logic that conventional wisdom cannot produce anything but conventional results. The, yep. These two things, I, that is logically impossible for that to happen. If you want to be wealthy in the game or want to be successful or you want to be a quote-unquote good player, you're going to have to be an outlier in some way. And exactly. so you'll have to look at the behaviors of everyone else, look at what's bothering everyone else, and understand, hmm, well, that bothers everyone else. Maybe that's something I should dive into. Right, Warren Buffett has a great quote. You know, when people are being greedy, it's a good time to be fearful. When people are fearful, it's a good time to be greedy. If people hate bulk buying things, or if people hate the trade site, boom, I'm gonna figure out how to use the trade site better than you. People think the game is ruined without TFT. You can't make money without it. Okay, well, what is it that people make money with on TFT? I'm gonna focus everywhere else. Right? Everyone's playing Magic Find this league. Okay, everyone's got mirrors. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna craft eight mirror items in the first week when material costs are low, and now I'm gonna passively make uh, what 15 mirrors a day. Like if I were to RMT, I'd be making several thousand dollars a day just because y you can predict these things. Yeah, right? that's the scale of and, things, by the way, when to yeah. touch the very beginning, like the scale yeah. of real money trading is absurd in this game. So yeah, it's very real, the amount of money. That's why people are doing it. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I mean, obviously it's important to draw a balance between personal prerogatives and the well-being and health of the game. For, for people who are getting started and like you're just trying to figure out wh where you stand within PoE if you're not like a super in invested player, right? Obviously, people like myself and, and you to an extent, I know you play other games and you said you're getting more recently into it. Um, the long-term health of the game, because especially with streaming and content, it's like if the game ends up going to... It, the way the dodo that's that's obviously a major impact for me so right. the macro perspective is maybe something that i care more about but on, on the micro level for like people as players um don't be afraid to pursue like something that seems novel right and maybe even if you do make mistakes those mistakes will be your best teachers and they will be formative experiences that exactly. make you become a better player right like one of the biggest like shifts that happened from when i first started playing and when you first started playing to now is I remember when people used to find an item that was cool or if it was good, it was, holy shit, man, like, let's make a build around this. Like, we'll make it work. Yeah. Sometimes I'll craft mirror items now, and people will come in first and say, what build is it for? Right? And it, it, it's it's the complete opposite approach, right? It's like yeah. a game a game that is cornerstone on, on its infinite complexity and literal, literal billions of different combinations has been condensed into this whitewashed version of, okay, there's five builds I can play. The meta's boring right now. I'm like, yeah. no, the meta's not boring. That's You're a great boring. Point. That's a great point because right? I, I have like never watched anyone's beginner content ever because I the, when I was a beginner I watched Kriparian and I just synthesized mm -hmm. what he was doing and I was like I looks cool I have Elemental Cleave Templar I remember he used to level with that all the time the racing scene everyone's going Ellie Cleave Templar it's like that kind of stuff you have to integrate a, a new player you have to integrate that that uh, that experience with the reason for them to actually want to to do it, and I think that's a huge problem that Path of Exile has right now is the mm -hmm. onboarding of those new players is pretty bad. Uh, they've been making good steps uh, here and there, like yep. updating Act One and uh, but like dude, like hovering over gem techs, like even splitting steel, a level one skill splitting steel, the entire gem text takes up the screen. It's like I don't I don't know what seventy five percent of the gems in the game do. Uh, because I, I left at, um, my, I, I was gone in the military for three years and it was uh, Legacy League until like Heist, I think. And so when I left, there were four acts in the game and they <laughs> implemented like, and, and I, I came back three years later 
and uh, you know, there's like 200 new gems or whatever. I don't know if you've ever watched my videos or my stream. I played Discharge, Blade Vortex, yeah. Tornado Shot. It's like, guess where all these skills have existed for 10 years? I literally have not learned what, like even someone, like I've played this game for like 30,000 hours. Uh, I've made more mirror items in, the, in this game than anyone else in the history of this game's existence. I probably know itemization and crafting better than any human being on the planet. I maybe understand 5% of this game in its to totality. And yeah. I fucking love it because those esoteric yep. interests you I have were ones that were bred of my own uh, like self-reliance and my own, you know, so to speak, struggle. And that is, I think, what's missing for most new people in capturing it because in an attempt to, to gain these people, right, it's it's like a very vapid surface level thing when you get somebody, oh, look, we've got 2 million people playing the game. That doesn't mean shit if they're quitting a week later. Exactly. Right? One exactly. of the things I present the most about content creators in PoE is like, I don't give a shit who's popular week two or week one of a league. I want to see who's popular, uh, you know, two months in. Because 90% of leagues, it's like you'll see these people who return to PoE and act like they're champions of the game. Oh, yeah. And then like after nine days, they quit. And you wonder why people uh, pretend like there's no content to do. And it's because the people who are their tastemakers that they're following because they, they haven't taken the time to develop their own opinions about things. Yep. They say, oh, yeah, only the first 10 days matter. Who gives a shit about Senator? Who gives a shit about this? And it's like... It's fine if you come to those conclusions yourself, but take the time to, to discover that, right? Yep. And so I think that um, I, communally as a whole, what we, we should do is encourage people to to really take advantage of the core competency of this game, which is like the infinitude to which you can explore and create and be yep. be creative. Like it really it can be a creative outlet. Yep. I'm not a painter, I'm not a musician, but I'm a like I'm a crafter, I'm like, baby. I, I, like, I'm gonna have to move to Brooklyn after this one, but like I'm not a crafter, I'm an artist, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is an excellent point. Is um, yeah. and, and that's what I uh, in my beginner guide. I just made a, a beginner guide. Um, that was one of the things. Is like if if the infinite possibilities of upgrading your character in some capacity does not excite you, it's just straight up not a, not the game for you. Like go play Diablo. Like no, then that's not a, a bad thing. Go play Diablo. Go yeah. play any other RPG out there. Like that you have yeah. games like that. We just want to mindlessly yeah. turn off your brain and experience. But if you want to, and that's why I always recommend a build guide too. It's because the build mm -hmm. guide gives you the formulas for then you to figure out how to actually implement and solve the problem, yeah. right? It's like... Well, I mean, the, a, build, a build guide, too, it's, it's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of a catch-22, right? Because it's like, you want new player, You want players to come in, right? You need to, to get the eyeballs in there. But you need also some initial retention. And it's like, if, if following a build guide will allow that person to get invested enough into the game that their second build is one where they start doing that exploring, that's a lot better than somebody who's disillusioned after the first act because it's too confusing to follow, right? Yep. Um, the problem is when you start catering so much to those new eyeballs, uh, to the point that you lose that complexity or yes. the, the general views of, of the populace at large are espoused in such a way that if you do not follow, uh, that consensus, you are somehow operating outside of the zeitgeist in a way that you're like ostracized. Like when people, I, I jokingly bought a three mirror venters. Um, because of, and I'm wearing a three modded, uh, perfect rarity helmet and I never leave my hideout because everyone's playing MF this league. Yeah. And so I just thought it would be funny to like meme at the fact that I'm wearing perfect MF gear and I've never killed the mob. Right. And, and but it's like <laughs> people, people are like, imagine playing TS with MFing this league. And it's like, you know, like that, that kind of mentality, I, right. I get it. And people like to put prod at each other, but it, it's actually kind of insidious on a macro scale because when people feel like especially you know people who have platforms like you and i do right it's like you can obviously talk people back and forth but for most people it's like they have a very insular community within the game and so it's like they might know a couple people that they trade with or they're in a guild with or whatever right but by and large they live vicariously through the sentiments of people expressed in public forums like twitch or or reddit or whatever right and if all, if you start seeing voices uh, piling in on one another, being like, this is fucking trash, this is garbage, blah, blah, blah. And they're just people who are the ones that are have not taken the time to yep. understand the depth or whatever. Then the game starts to, to cater towards that. And if you need a case yep. study for this, compare Diablo 2 to Diablo 3. Because yep. that's what happens when that paradigm shift happens. And, and you yep. tell me any person You, that says you just that, articulated the problem with modern gaming. Like, that's straight up exactly what's been going on. And that's why... Why do you think we're seeing remakes and remasters 24-7, right? It's because there was an essence back then because they, they were not approaching the the bottom line I got from a business it's like a bottom line perspective right yeah. like you said it's all they're trying to do is get the most amount of players but by extension they're also alienating the people I will always say hardcore players are the lifeblood of any game period like if your game does not have a hardcore player base it's just not going to be a successful game period like straight up it's yeah. that simple um 
So yeah, that, that is a that is a very good point. You're, you're very articulate, dude. You you, you would you would think that you sit down and uh, <laughs> wrote a, wrote a script on all that stuff. Um, but that is a massive point, and that is why Path of Exile has it started pretty slow, right? It was a slow simmer, but this yeah. game has grown to the point. It's not quite the household name as something like a, a Blizzard game, yeah. like Diablo or something, but it's getting there, man. Like this game is really getting. It, it, it's finding the right people finally at this point, and yeah. of course by that by extension, we're gonna have all the other people that are like telling you, uh, <laughs> like, hey, I tried yeah. to follow this guy and I couldn't figure out. Wait, this you exact- know, what? I mean, I. I- I feel like most directors would rather have directed Citizen Kane than uh, Avengers Endgame. You know what? So sometimes, sometimes when you look at like a body of work through a, a lens like that, oh yeah, I think I think that uh, you know metrics don't always encapsulate yeah. it. And, and um, yeah, I think yeah, I mean dra- drawing that you obviously have to tether a line now that they're owned by a parent company, right? But uh, true, if you completely if, like. Blizzard, for example, right? They had other bodies of work where they can kind of jump. Okay, well, we've got still got WoW, we've got whatever, but GGG just has Path of Exile, right? And so they don't have that opportunity to, you know, okay, if we release a bad Diablo, we've got WoW, we've got StarCraft, we've got yep. Overwatch, we've got, right? And so um, they do have to pay due attention to this and, and to their credit. They, like, I, I, they, they are, I would never tell them what to do because. Again, that Mark Twain quote. Just you don't listen, know just don't listen know, to them talk. Go, go listen to yeah. the Path of Exile two conferences. Um, like it's insane the amount of pat, no, yeah. passion, let alone just knowledge, straight up knowledge they have on the game. Yeah. Like you'll see a lot of people that have built something, game developers, and then they don't quite know what to do after that. Like it hits, yeah. it's an explosion overnight. There's tons of people that want to be interested in, it, and then it's just they don't know how to iterate and they don't know how to push it forward in the correct yeah. way. Um, not to and interrupt it, you. I'm a, sorry. No, no, it's okay. I, 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 the fact that you called me articulate, aside from the fact that I'm vain and love compliments. Uh, a lot of the people who I have these discussions with, uh, I'll see their chat or I'll see them being like, yap, 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 yap. <laughs> and like, yeah. e- e- even, no, but the, but the point is that like, uh, the word choice, even though I, I will use a lot of words, I think that the, the points that I'm making, it, you can't encapsulate a 10, 10 year body of work that you've spent that much time exactly. into and condense it into a five, a five minute soundbite. And like staying true to who you are, like we talked about at the beginning, it's like, if that's what you want, then... There's other people that do that, but yeah. I mean, if you're discussing the issues about something that, quite literally, on my part, saved my life in many, in oh, yeah. many ways, it's like I'm not going to sit there and try to condense uh, uh, one of the longest-standing relationships I have in my life. Eleven years I've played this game, longer than I've ever lived in a city, dated a girl, so outside of family, right? I was like, you might think it's silly to spend this much time and care so much about something, but I look back at you and say. I think it's silly that you spend so much time doing something you don't care about, right? Yeah. And um, it's uh, with with GGG, uh, I think that they're best left to their own devices. And so when you asked earlier, what do I think about trading? It's like, I think expectation can be uh, one of like the, the big killers with people in PoE is because like, you know, people tend to uh, recycle like, like kind of buzzwords all the time. Oh, this is what we want. This is what we need. And if it doesn't come, then Reddit page, this is bullshit. This is terrible. Every single league I've played Path of Exile, the first week of it's the worst league ever. And then like nine yeah. days in, when somebody actually figures yeah. out how to do the league mechanic, this is fucking amazing. What the? Yeah. Wait, do, what do you mean? I can't see the blue wisp. What's going on? Yeah. What is this? And then like, now it's, oh, dude, the diamond shape. You just have to follow the you yeah. get 10 billion explosion exalts and divines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, I think, I think the, the, the hallmark of a good player in this game is that similar to the game itself, um, there's complexity in your skill set that you can be adaptive and reactive to changes as they happen, right? Um, you know, everyone wants to magic find this league. All right, that's fantastic. Great. Um, let's see how you do next league when, you know, if, if it gets nerfed, right? It's like, is the game going to be shit again? Or have you just focused too much on one singular style of play yep. that it doesn't allow you to? And for me, I take that as a challenge, right? It's like, I have to round myself out in a way that like I can, you know, weather the storm through that and, and through trial and error and some leagues worse better than others. But that's that's how you become a more complete player. And I think cool. if you look if you if you look at the fact that a lot of the big streamers, content people in PoE are people that have played for ten years, I mean, what better testament to that, right? Yep, exactly. Right? The the fact that the people who are sticking around still, who are these thought leaders, they might condense things and you know because of their viewership, it might get misinterpreted and be like, this is not. Like if I tell somebody what build I'm playing, it doesn't mean hey. 200,000 of you people go play the same build because it's the oh, yeah. all end all. Yeah. But sometimes people interpret it right that way, right? And so, uh, you know, I'm sure there's maybe a communicative barrier that, barrier that can cross there or that problem can be yeah. fixed. But by I, and large, it's just like people need to be um, more conscientious of the fact that this game, it's, this is not a, like a mobile game that you're playing for 20 minutes. And if you want to get good at it and you want to become an upper level player, that's going to take some investment in time. Um, however, I, I can guarantee you 
that there is no better return on investment than investing yep. into your knowledge and understanding of the core mechanics, itemization, and all of these precipitous factors that lead to long-term growth uh, in PoE because they are adaptive and they are ones that will, regardless of the ebb and tide or flow of the game, you will be able to use to launch pad your next league, right? Um, so, you know, I, I think that it's hard to tell somebody the way the best way to, to get good is to, is to be shit for a while, but the, it's the reality of the situation, that's just, right? That's just life, right? That's and, how you and, gain and, experience and, with anything. You yeah, have to just do it. it. It's, it's, it's also the catch-22 of being a content creator, right? Because you want to say things that people like... People are far more positive to, hey, guys, here's a way that you can buy this in five minutes, blah, 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 blah. Here's yeah. the best build ever. Here's the fucking, or, or, you know, every single one of your thumbnails has, like, a, yeah. uh, your face going, like, oh, my gosh, yeah. Uh, right? And it, it's like, okay, not everything. It's like sometimes the hard truths um, are, are the ones that need to be spoken the most. And uh, in particular, if that rubs people the wrong way, maybe address yeah. why that, what's that underlying thing that's causing you to feel that way? Because that's probably where your weakness lies. Yep. Man. Exactly. And, that, and that's life, too. It's like people, yeah. people just straight up don't want to do the thing that takes the most time, the most difficult. Like they just don't want to spend the time to do it. And to their credit, this is a video game. Right? At the end of the day, this is not. Well, I, I want to rephrase that again because yes, it's a video game, but like you said, it's you're, you're doing something that you're passionate about. You're doing something that has actual tangible benefits to because it's a, it's a character building thing, honestly. Yeah. Quite frankly, well, you're, like, you're, you are I, choosing to play Path of Exile because of its complexity. It is literally its cornerstone, its hallmark. Right. The reason why someone would play Poe over Diablo. Diablo is far more polished. Oh yeah. It's got a bigger studio behind it. It's easier to get into. You don't have to understand. It doesn't require third party systems. The reason why someone would choose PoE over that is because the game is complex and because of the game's depth. And so yep. when you start to abandon your your outlook or your uh, you know the courage of your convictions why you came in the first place because of some short term uh, you know personal oh well I don't want to have to work hard like that is like that should never be uh, applied to the the game at large because exactly uh, it, it, you can, it's an unsustainable system right yeah I agree um, yeah I mean we've we've talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much everything I wanted to talk about here. Um, All right. This is uh, thank you for having this conversation, man. Um, I, I again, I wanted yeah, to give you the platform it. for that, but I, I've always just wanted to pick your brain because I've I've, I, I've noticed that you just have a s very unique approach to the game. Not not you know, wholly unique, but you, there are very few people, especially con maybe content creator. You might be like the only one uh, to truly approach the game in the way that you do. Um, so I, I applaud you for that and. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for having the conversation, man. Um, I hope yeah, that... I, I, I very much enjoyed it. I apologize if I dragged on a little bit, but uh, again, uh, my deepest gratitude for uh, no. for being the one to extend that olive branch, and uh, I wish you uh, nothing but the best, and uh, if you ever want to uh, learn how to uh, stack those Ds a little higher, I'll let you boy. Absolutely, dude. All right, man. Thank you for, uh, thank you for right. having the Take time. Take care, brother. Yeah, you too, Cheers, man. man. All right, peace out. Cool. All right, there you go, gentlemen. There is the interview with Mr. Belton. Um, very unique guy, very interesting guy. Um, I would like to talk to him more in the future. So I got a pee. I've been holding in my pee for like, gosh darn it. Where am I? Where am I? There I am. All right, there we go. <laughs> I forgot we turned on the camera.